Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Marina Grosu from Washington, D.C. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. During his Wednesday general audience, Pope Francis said that Europe must first hope to tide over the crises it is facing today. He said it was important that hope needs to be restored to the new generations. He made a mention of the society that is sickened with individualism, consumerism, and empty escapism, adding that it needs to open their souls and their spirits to be oxygenated in order to read the crisis as an opportunity and deal with it positively. The pontiff also made a mention of his recent visit to Marseille in France to take part in the Mediterranean encounter, comprising bishops, mayors, and young people to confront issues facing the countries bordering the historic sea. The Pope said the outcome of the meeting had to take into consideration the primary value of the human person and his or her inviolable dignity. Cardinal Timothy Dolan of New York is accusing U.S. President Joe Biden of not taking his calls or answering his letters in a bid to address what he calls the tragic, broken migrant system. Speaking to the New York Post, the Cardinal said that New York cannot handle all the migrants arriving in the city, and everyone is aware of that. He said it was unfair, and it's not just a New York problem, but an America problem as well. He also said that New York Mayor Eric Adams has been very good when it came to rallying religious leaders and asking their help to advocate with the federal government to deal with the migrant crisis. The Cardinal said that the current system is totally wrecked and in need of dramatic immigration reform. He said the church supports the right of a nation to have borders and border patrol, but it still has an obligation to care for the newcomers. Owner of Tesla and SpaceX, Elon Musk, said in an X post on Wednesday evening that he supports a border wall, adding that migrants to the U.S. need to produce only a shred of evidence to be granted asylum. He said that gaining asylum status after illegally entering the southern border is as easy as a quick Google search. Musk also made it clear that the border crisis was not a partisan issue. He added that U.S. borders have to be secured, and even the Democrat Party leaders of New York are acknowledging the severity of the crisis. He made this comment after he announced that he was visiting the southern border to Eagle Pass in Texas in the coming days. Earlier on Tuesday, he said he had spoken to Representative Tony Gonzalez of Texas about the crisis. The Vatican has made it clear that a world free of nuclear weapons is necessary and possible. This was stressed at the 67th Annual Conference of the International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, in Vienna on Tuesday. The Holy See's commitment towards nuclear disarmament, announced by Monsignor Daniel Paccio, who is the Undersecretary for the Multinational Sector of the Section for Relations with States and International Organizations of the Secretariat of State. The Monsignor focused on three countries, namely Iran, North Korea, and Ukraine, in his speech. He also expressed the Vatican's disappointment over Tehran stopping the implementation of its commitment under the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action two years ago. He also expressed the gratitude of the Vatican for the patient efforts of the international community to restart talks about the nuclear program of North Korea. With regard to Ukraine, Monsignor Pacho reiterated the necessity to ensure the safety of the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. Over half of Nagorno-Karabakh's 120,000 ethnic Armenians have fled to Armenia as a result of Azerbaijan's effective repression of the ethnic Armenians' efforts to seek independence. According to the spokesperson for Armenia, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, 65,036 Armenians have been evacuated from Nagorno-Karabakh after the onslaught of Azeri troops. The death toll from a petrol station bombing in Nagorno-Karabakh has grown to 70, with at least 105 people still missing and 290 wounded. In the meantime, the United Nations Refugee Agency and the Red Cross are coordinating supplies to the fleeing Armenians. Hospitals are inundated with injured patients as a consequence of Azerbaijan's months-long blockade of the enclave's crucial entry point, and the tragedy has exacerbated the misery of people without food and medication. 
Meanwhile, the U.S. Agency for International Development Director Samantha Power pledged $11.5 million in emergency U.S. aid for the region. An Armenian Apostolic Church priest has raised concerns over the destruction of ancient Christian sites in conflict-ridden Nagorno-Karabakh inhabited by ethnic Armenians. 33-year-old Father David raised concerns about the survival of Christian heritage sites in the Breakwave Enclave after it was overrun by Azerbaijan troops. He is currently providing spiritual support to thousands of Armenians fleeing their ancestral homes in the enclave located within Muslim Azerbaijan. Speaking to Reuters, the priest said that this was one of the darkest pages in Armenian history, which is full of hardships. He said the enclave is home to 400 Armenian sacred sites, and some of them were either desecrated or destroyed after Azeri troops stormed the territory during the 2020 44-day war. The priest also warned that Azeri authorities could lay claim over many monasteries and brand them as belonging to an earlier Christian civilization known as Caucasian Albania, about which is little known. More than 40 countries are going to participate in the fourth edition of the Men's Rosary on Saturday, October 7th. It is the day when the Church celebrates the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. One of the pioneering countries in this spiritual initiative is Argentina, where rosary recitals will be conducted in all cities. There will also be a central call for believers to travel to the capital, Buenos Aires, to take part in the Men's Rosary in the Plaza de Mayo at 10 a.m. local time. The first rosary recitation was on May 28, 2022, and then again in October of the same year. 150 cities on five continents participated in the Men's Rosary. During the Rosary in Argentina, there will be prayers and reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary, for the vindication of masculinity in God's plan to protect, guard, and defend the sanctity of families, in the example of St. Joseph and the defense of families from anti-Christian ideas. Eight organizations, Missio and Renovabis, have published a Religious Freedom Country report which states that in Ukraine, more than 450 places of worship have been destroyed or damaged since the war began in early 2022. The conflict has damaged or destroyed churches, houses of worship, wayside crosses, chapels, synagogues, and mosques. There is evidence that some churches were damaged by accident because of indiscriminate shelling or anti-aircraft fire. However, there is also proof of targeted attacks on churches by the Russian troops, said the report. The exact number of destroyed or damaged structures cannot be ascertained as fighting is going on in some regions and some parts of the country are occupied by the Russian forces. Most of the churches and chapels targeted by the military belong to the Orthodox churches. Almost 239 Ukrainian Orthodox Church and 36 Orthodox Church of Ukraine churches and chapels have been targeted. The largest Catholic lay organization, the Knights of Columbus, has announced that it has been ranked 22nd on the Forbes magazine list of the best insurance companies in the United States in 2024. It is for the third straight year that it has received this prestigious recognition by Forbes and German online statistics portal Statista Inc. The list was prepared after conducting an independent survey of more than 15,000 people across America. It covered several points, including customer recommendations and overall satisfaction. The loyalty score was calculated based on a series of questions about the likelihood that the customer would keep the policy under different circumstances and the total duration of consumers' policies with the same insurer. The Knights of Columbus invests more than $122 billion in life insurance for its members and their families. It also offers investment services that align with Catholic social teaching. Chaldean Catholic Patriarch Louis Raphael Sacco has paid a visit to the Christian community in Iraq's Karakosh, where a fire broke out during a wedding celebration, leaving at least 114 people dead and injuring 200 others. Cardinal Sacco expressed his closeness with the victims and their families and conveyed his condolences.
during his visit to the bereaving community on Wednesday. The Patriarch expressed hope that Christians, Muslims, Arabs, and Kurds would band together in the face of sorrow. The head of the Chaldean Church stayed in Karakosh to attend the funeral of the first group of 40 victims. It is impossible to identify the victims because the corpses are charred beyond recognition. Meanwhile, Hundreds of mourners marched in a tearful procession to a cemetery in Karakosh to pay their respects to those who perished in the gruesome tragedy. The Iraqi civil defense said early evidence showed that the origin of the fire was the use of fireworks during the wedding, which resulted in the first igniting of flames inside the hall, after which the fire spread swiftly. Parts of the hall were reduced to cinders because they were made of highly combustible composite panels. Hundreds of guests who suffered burns are being treated in medical facilities across Nineveh, including the adjacent metropolitan capital of Mosul. Many of them are in critical condition. Abdul Amaral Shamari, the government's Minister of Interior, visited the disaster scene after being entrusted with coordinating all efforts to help victims. Meanwhile, security officials arrested 10 workers, including the owner, and three people in charge of the fireworks display. News desk, SW News. The United Nations Middle East Peace Process Special Coordinator, Tor Wenisland, is voicing grave concern over Israel's increasing settlement development in the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem. He voices concerns during a recent presentation before the UN Security Council in New York. Wenisland said that an alarming number of over 10,000 dwellings had been built in just three months in the Palestinian areas. He said that the settlements aggravate the occupation, fuel violence, hinder Palestinian access to their land and resources, and threaten the viability of a two-state solution. He also implored Israel's administration to immediately halt settlement development and dismantle outposts in compliance with international law. Wenisland also condemned the use of fatal weaponry in densely populated areas, as well as the decades-long violence in the occupied West Bank and Israel. And those are your latest headlines. Join us again tomorrow for more. You can also visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.